Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about how dirt sticks to surfaces and how we can make self-clean surfaces. And uh, the process of how dirt sticks surfaces is called fouling. So what is fouling? Let's start from the basics. So if we have a surface and dirt starts building up on our surface, there's the dirt, there's the surface. This process is called fouling. And in my research, the type of dirt typically is proteins or polymers or other kinds of organic materials. So I consider organic fouling. And this typically happens in some kind of water environment. So we can see examples of fouling everywhere. So from the cholesterol buildup in our arteries to the buildup of foulants in filters, industrial in our house, or even on large scale, the buildup of barnacles on a boat, which is an example of life that is fouling, biofouling. And something that's in common with all these types of fouling is that they prevent the surface from performing the way it should. They all have negative effects on the surface. So if we consider the filter, the buildup of fouling on the filter blocks the pores and prevents the filter from working. The barnacles on the boat, they increase drag, so the boat can't move as effectively through the water and you need more fuel. And for something like an artery or any kind of pipe or tube, the effect of fouling is actually quite detrimental in this example. So if we have our heart and it's pumping blood through our artery, and then if we have some buildup of cholesterol in the artery wall, so we have a very small buildup, so maybe we lose one-tenth of the width of our artery. This increases the pressure that the heart has to pump at. And so for just a tenth decrease, one and a half times the pressure is required. So in this case, the heart's okay, a little bit of exercise for the heart to pump the blood through. But if we allow it to build up even more increase of the fouling, so now we've lost a fifth of our artery width, well now twice the pressure is required, and now maybe our heart is a little bit worried because you know it's not that much fouling, but already a lot more effort is required. And from there it gets even worse. If we lose half the width of our artery, then 16 times the pressure is required to get the same blood flow through. So obviously this is very bad for our heart and can be quite harmful. And so in these examples, you see that fouling can have quite a detrimental effect on any surface that it's on. And so what's the solution? Well, the aim of our, my research is, can we make a self-cleaning surface? So a surface that doesn't get fouling. And if the surface doesn't get fouling, then the surface will keep performing well. And so how can we stop fouling? To stop fouling, we have to understand, well, why does fouling happen? And in a phrase, it happens due to high surface energy. And to explain that, we need to look at the atoms in our material itself. So here's some atoms, and you can see that they're all connected to each other. And if we look at an internal atom, we can see that it has bonds all around it. It has its neighbor bonds, and has its above bond, and has its below bond. And this is the ideal state for the atom, the ideal bonding state. And so this is a happy atom. And pretty much all the atoms inside our material are like this. They're all happy and fully bonded. But an atom on the surface, it's got its neighbor bonds and it's got its bond below it, but it's missing the bond above. So this is not the ideal bonding state for the atom. And so it's an unhappy atom and it wants to adhere with anything else. So it wants more bonds and this means it makes the surface adhesive. And this is how high surface energy makes adhesion. Okay, so if we want to stop adhesion, then I guess we just use low surface energy coatings. So low surface energy equals no fouling. So this is basically true. If we coat a surface with PTFE, like for example our cooking ware, then we can make non-stick surfaces. Or if we coat a biomedical devices or experimental device with PDMS, then it also repels the things from ad adhering. So this is examples of we can use low surface energy surfaces to prevent fouling. So problem solved? Kind of. Uh, this works in many circumstances, but not all. And in fact, an important place that this doesn't work, where we still get fouling on low surface energy surfaces, is in water environments. So if we have a water environment, then actually fouling can occur. And the reason this happens is due to the interaction between water and our surface. And the interaction between water and the surface is called the hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity of the surface. So for any surface, we can say that it's hydrophilic. If it's hydrophilic, then it's water loving. Example would be metals. And for if it's the opposite is that if a surface is hydrophobic, then it's water hating and repels water from the surface. And an example would be a lotus leaf. 
And you can tell a surface is hydrophobic because water will bead up on the surface and will easily roll off. OK, so we have these two different types of surfaces. So why does a hydrophobic surface, which it tends to be low surface energy, why can that cause fouling? So if we consider the interaction between the water, our dirt, and our surface, then we can see how the fouling occurs even on low surface energy surfaces. So we have our surface. It's hydrophobic. It's low surface energy. And we have our water. The water does not want to be in contact with our surface and because it's hydrophobic. And because it doesn't want to be in contact with the surface, the ideal state for the system is for the dirt to adhere to the surface. This minimizes the water surface contact. And this is why you can get fouling in a low surface energy surface. OK, so this is, means that actually the hydrophobicity is actually the cause of fouling in a water environment in some cases. So this is what causes fouling. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to modify surfaces to change the hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity to modify its fouling behavior in different environments. And so how can we do this? So my research is how can I make a material that I can change the hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity? And so the material I use is a material called PSBPMA. It's a polymer. So you can think of it as a long spaghetti strand of polystyrene with a small amount of PMA on one end. And so I make a layer of this, and the PMA self-assembles into these spherical parts on the inside of the layer. And then I illuminate it with UV light, and this glues the polystyrene parts together and breaks apart the PMA component. And then I wash it in a solvent, and this removes the PMA components. And I'm left with this porous polystyrene structure. And so I want to use this porous polystyrene structure to make something like a filter, because as you can see, it's got this porous internal structure. And I want to use it to make filters. And the problem with filters in many applications is that fouling can build up on it. And that blocks the pores and prevents this, the filter from working properly. So I want to be able to modify this material. So how can I modify this material to make it more hydrophilic or more hydrophobic, depending on the application I want to use it for? I can show you two ways. One way, I can modify it chemically to make it more hydrophilic. And I can also show you I can modify the structure of this material to make it more hydrophobic. So I'll start with the chemical modification. I modify it with surfactants. Now, I think you're all familiar with soap. This is a common type of surfactant. And surfactants have a hydrophilic part, and they have a hydrophobic part. And in the case of soap, the hydrophobic part attaches to the dirt on your oily skin and allows the water to remove it. And so I add these surfactants to my material when I coat it. And we can have a look at what this does to our material. So let's have a zoom in on the surface. So here, our surfactant is embedded or adhered to the surface of the material. And the hydrophilic part is exposed. And so when we put in water, we get this water layer that forms on the surface of the material because the water wants to bind with the hydrophilic part of the surfactant. And this water surfactant layer on the surface actually prevents the foulings from getting to the surface. So this acts as a way to prevent fouling in a water environment. And so while before we could use hydrophobic surfaces in an outside of water situation to prevent fouling, here we actually use the hydrophilic surface to prevent fouling because the water and surfactant really want to join together and block any foulings from the surface. And the other modification we can do to make it more hydrophobic is a structural one. So interesting things happen when you make microstructures on surfaces. And one of the interesting things is that the microstructure can greatly change the hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity of your surface. And you can see this. I mentioned the lotus leaf previously. The lotus leaf has this microstructure on its surface, this micropillar structure. And this is what gives the lotus leaf such a hydrophobic surface. And so one of the things I tried to do is, well, can I do this kind of modification to my porous material to give it a similar effect. And so I'll show you how that can be done. So here's the surface before, and it's hydrophilic. And what we do is we etch the top of the material. We remove the top layer. And what's left is the internal pillar structure, as we saw, is used by something like the lotus leaf. And as you can see, this modification allows our surface to become much more hydrophobic. So we have these two modifications. We can do the chemical modification, and we can do the structural modification. And both of these, either to make it hydrophilic or hydrophobic, depending on what we want to do with it. And so what do we want to do with it? What applications are for this kind of modifications? So if you consider just the hydrophilic modifications, well, uh, an important thing that I've been working on is how can we use it to make filters? If we can make a filter that's self-cleaning, 
then we can make filters that last longer. And this can be used for cleaning water. And this is important in places where there's scarce resources, there's not a lot of money to go around. So it's very valuable to have filter materials that can last a long time and you can keep clean. We can also use this kind of hydrophilic anti-fouling coating on biomedical devices. Because if you have a medical device that's implanted, you don't want proteins to build up on it because that can damage either the biomedical device or it can cause some harm in the body itself. So that's two ways we can use the hydrophilic modification. How about the hydrophobic modification? Well, there's a lot of things that can be done for this as well, typically outside of the water environment. For example, if we want to prevent ice growth, if, water, if our surface is hydrophobic and water can't even build up on it on, in the first place, then ice growth can be prevented. And this is important for things like airplanes or power lines where ice growth actually causes great damage. Um, for example, power lines can be downed quite easily by ice growth. We can also use hydrophobic coatings to protect electronics that are exposed to the environment. So if, we, if moisture builds up on an electronic device that can create residues and it can dis, um, corrode or damage the electronic components. So we want to have this kind of hydrophobic coating. So if we can coat our surface with a hydrophobic coating, then maybe our electronics are protected in that way. And similarly for solar panels, which are also exposed to the environment, we don't want moisture to build up and that moisture can leave residues. We want to keep moisture off our surface and prevent fouling on something like a solar panel. So these are different ways that through hydrophilic modification, we can have anti-fouling coatings in some situations. And through hydrophobic um, modifications, we can prevent fouling in other situations. And I also think it's exciting to think about, well, in the future, these are two separate applications, but maybe in the future that these two methods, we have this one material with these two possible modifications. Maybe it's possible to combine them. And in the future, as we make more complicated bio devices, then maybe we would want to be able to control the patterning and the control the specific um, uh, adhesion of proteins in some future biomedical devices. So I think it's exciting to think about what we can do if we can combine these different aspects of surface modification. And so I hope I showed you that self-clean surfaces kind of seems like a maybe mundane idea, but it's very important because it affects many aspects of life and has many consequences if a surface cannot be kept clean. And so with self-clean surfaces, I hope that we can use them to, well, of course, save money. Um, I hope we can use them to hope to save energy. And I also hope we can use self-clean surfaces to help save lives. So thank you for listening, and have a good day.